verse 41 through 50. Well, let's just go. We're going to read through this and then we'll come back. It says, Moreover, concerning a foreigner who is adulterous, who is not of your people, mm -hmm. which would be Israel, right? A tribe not of Israel but has come from a far country of your name that has honor, authority, and character's sake that is motivated for that purpose. I think that's very interesting. I'd like to come back to that. Mm -hmm. Verse 42. For they will hear to the point of obedience of your great name and your strong hand, which leads in a direction of power, and your outstretched arm when he comes and prays and intercedes toward this temple. Here in heaven, your dwelling place, and do according to all for which the foreigner who is adulterous calls to you, that all peoples of the earth may know that your name, which is a mark of an individual for honor, authority, and character. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to digest in this. Mm -hmm. And fear morally of you as do your people Israel and that they may know and recognize that this temple which I have built is called by your name. When your people in verse 44 go out to battle in warfare against their enemy, a hating adversary, wherever you send them, and when they pray with supplication, asking for mercy, deliverance, and salvation to Yahweh toward the city which you have chosen and the temple which I have built in your name, then hear in heaven their prayer and their supplication, which is gracious favor, and maintain their cause which is a judicial verdict that comes from the divine law of Torah. Mm -hmm. When they sin against you, for there is no one that does not sin, and you come and become angry to the point of enragement with them and deliver them to the enemy, and they take them captive to the land of the enemy far and or near. So we messed up. Mm -hmm. Our enemies have taken us captive. We're now in another land and we're suffering. Okay. And they come to their senses. Yet when they come to themselves back to where they started in their minds in the land where they were carried captive and repent and make supplication to be moved to favor by petitioning to you in the land of those who took them captive saying, we have sinned and done wrong. We have committed wickedness. And when they return to the starting point to you with all their heart, with understanding, and with all their soul in the land of their enemies who led them away captive and pray with supplication towards you, their land which you gave to their fathers, the city which you have chosen, and the temple which I have built, for your name, which is a mark of an individual for honor, authority, and character, then here in heaven, your dwelling place, their prayer, and their supplication, and maintain their cause through the divine law of Torah. And forgive your people who have sinned through rebellious revolt against you and all their transgressions, which they have transgressed as to break away from just authority against you and grant them compassion as cherished a fetus in the womb before those who took them captive, that they may have compassion with love on them. Mm -hmm. now, that's a lot to digest in there. But basically, at the end of the day, there's going to be an end time group of Gentiles who are going to become convicted. And they're going to break away from this system of corruption that we see going on right now. And they're not going to want the mark of Cain or the nature of Cain anymore. So I'm going to leave it over to you because I know that you want to go ahead and um, point number one, you want to talk about whose prayers were heard versus 41 through 42. Yes. For, like I said in the opening comments, he made it uh, personal. He began to show me in the ways that he made it personal because I had a prayer when um, I got in trouble. And that prayer was for him. In my, in my mind, ever no way I was going to be forgiven. Uh, it, even it's exonerated from this, this trouble I had gotten into. So I said, I'm going to die in this place. But if I die, just let me die having a right relationship with you. Lead me to somebody 
that's not going to pity pat with me, not going to speak soft to me. It's going to just tell me the truth, whether I can take it or not, because I want to be right when I meet you. And so when Solomon was praying for the people of Israel and then in his prayer, he was asking Yahweh, even if a, a, a foreigner would pray to this temple, now, I had no knowledge of the way that they do traditionally now turn to the east and pray towards Jerusalem. Uh, but Yahweh was showing me that his Jerusalem is up in heaven with him right. and the temple is up there. Mm -hmm. And I was literally praying toward that place and he heard me, you know, and the person that he sent to me was really a strict of a strict nature. And he began to come. But finally, as the years passed by and I was able to meet this person face to face and he literally told me that Yahweh did not hear my prayers. And that's why I'm making this personal, because it's people out there that are really crying out to be delivered from some sin or from some stronghold there, knowing that somewhere you heard about this great name of Yahweh and how compassionate he is. And for me, I'm a living witness of his mercy and his compassion that you can cry out and he do hear your prayer because somebody wiser than any man walking in this earth prayed for you. And Yahweh acknowledged that prayer and he will acknowledge your prayer and direct your path along the way. But that enemy, that seed, that's already planted in the world is there to hinder you and to strike you. So through much evidence, Yahweh proved to me that he heard, but this teaching I was about to receive was teaching me that he didn't hear me, that I needed that person to pray for me. But I'm already delivered at that point, but the seed that's in me can't allow me to see the deliverance that I had already received. So I'm still in the same condition and I'm lost. And he began to show me, uh, I don't want to get ahead, but basically right there, that's my first point about receiving Solomon's prayer for you and acknowledging that Yahweh does hear your cries even if you are a foreigner, not just for his people. Baruch Hashem. Um, you know, I, I've met a lot of people over the years that are in a place in their life where they're in a lot of trouble. What you were mm -hmm. saying is bringing back memories of a lot of these people. And the, the vast majority of the people that I've experienced with this with over my 40 plus years now in this faith, you plead with them and you plead with them and you plead with them and you're hoping they're at the end of their rope and you've got some sort of a leverage that they want to cross over and change their life. Mm -hmm. And they just won't do it. They just won't pull the trigger and do it. And what it shows me is that the seed of Cain or the nature of Cain in that pride is so deep and so ingrained that unless a person, unless a person is really truly at the very end of the ropes, and it, that reminds me of your story so much as you told it over the years while being in prison, mm -hmm. um, Unless that desire is so great to want to get right with Yahweh, mm -hmm. it ain't going to happen. The other way is Yahweh, for whatever reason, he decides to have mercy on a person in that situation and decides to open up his heart and grant him repentance directly in that way, then it would happen for that person. Now, then at that point, it's the burden of that person to continue on and not fall away from the faith. But my point is, is that the vast majority of people that I meet just can't pull the trigger. I just can't go that far. I know what you're saying is right. 
And I know that's the remedy for me, but I just can't do it. I won't do it. And there's a whole bunch of reasons why. But at the end of the day, that's a mark. That's a sign that the nature of Cain is so deep in that person that they're just staying in a state of being unregenerate. Mm -hmm. They can't be regenerated. And uh, it's very sad to watch people deteriorate. And I see them and then I, I might bump into them, you know, a year or two later. I don't even recognize them anymore at that point. Their life has devolved into so much chaos and confusion with financial problems, family problems, relationship problems, health problems, all kinds of different problems. And it just gets worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. And it's like you sit there and you look at that and you're like, how pathetic. And then you sit there and you think to yourself, at what point does this person say, I've gone too far? Something's mm -hmm. got to change. Well, this group of people decides at some point that they're going to change. And the one thing that comes out here in verse 41 is that they are motivated to come to Yahweh for the purpose of receiving honor, authority, and character. Mm -hmm. That's what it says in the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. I'm not... I'm not extrapolating this of my own thoughts. This is what was in the Hebrew translation. And it's for, and it's, so that's a clue. So obviously their past life is a life where they're sick and tired of it. They don't want it anymore. And they want something better. They can't take it no more. And, and, and something came into their hearing mm -hmm. that they not only understood what they were hearing, but they understood it with intelligence. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm going to just real mm -hmm. short. When I was a much younger guy and I went into business for myself, I wasn't mature in how to handle money. Mm -hmm. And I made a lot of stupid mistakes over the years and getting myself into debt and all kinds of things like that. And it took a while before I started realizing money is a tool, but you got to you got to handle it. There's a law that regulates how it gets used in a righteous and an unrighteous manner. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to figure out how that actually works because I was never trained in that. You know, I, I'm a young guy that came up in the 50s and the 60s picking up Coke bottles off the side of the road and bring it to the 7-Eleven get a yeah, two cent uh, yeah. deposit return mm -hmm. so I can go buy a candy bar or something, you know. Yeah. So that's the extent of my understanding mm -hmm. of money. But People don't know how to handle the situations in their life, and it's gotten so bad. So obviously, this group of people says, that's it. I want a change in my life. I want honor. I want authority. And I want character that doesn't fail me. And that's it. That's Yahweh. That's his name. It brings, I heard of him. There's nothing. This is the person that I want to be like. You exactly. Know? You want to emulate. And, yeah. and, and, and there's nobody that I can look around that has these attributes but him. Right. Um, let's see here. You also want to go through verse 43 through 45.